Welcome to Planet Vehicle, an automotive reality show. Planet Vehicle helps the viewer experience the world of automobiles. We review new cars and take you on test drives. We talk with the heads of the automotive industry to find out what products their companies are bringing to the showroom. Transportation is a large part of lifestyle. We bring you athletes, business leaders, and celebrities at events where cars, SUVs, and motorcycles are featured and highlighted. Classic cars, new cars, or futuristic cars, Planet Vehicle puts them in the spotlight. Planet Vehicle introduces you to car clubs, takes you to auto shows, and reports from the racetrack. In addition to our television program, Planet Vehicle's website keeps you updated on the latest news and trends, while our viewer appreciation events provide the opportunity to mingle, network, and experience new and exciting models straight off the assembly line. An automobile is a huge purchase. Planet Vehicle shows you how to take great care of your investment, whether it's safety, maintenance, or ideas to customize your vehicle. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. It has Kodo, which means soul in motion, and it's based upon the Sonari concept, which was developed in 2010. Hey, it's Alvin Jones for Planet Vehicle. Today, I am excited to bring to you the third generation 2014 Mazda 3. When Planet Vehicle launched, one of the first people we spoke with was Derek Jenkins. Derek is the head of Mazda Design for North America. He talked to us about Coda, which means soul in motion. He also showed us the Scenari concept, which was a four-door coupe. And some of the stylings and the embodiment of Coda has gone into the new third generation Mazda 3. We had a chance to speak to Derek. He talked to us about his new product. Good morning, Alvin. It's great to be back on Planet Vehicle. Always love your show. Today we've got something all new for you. It's our all new 2014 Mazda 3. We're really excited about it. This is a big, big day for us. You can see completely new design, a lot more dramatic silhouette. This car is, features our new Coda design language. First and foremost, it's all about proportion. So you can see we have this very long, dramatic front hood and the A-post and cabin of the car is pushed to the rear. And this has two benefits. It really makes the car look more coupe-like and more dynamic. But also, because the A-post is farther back, you really have a better view of the road. Your view angle is a lot wider than typically when the A-post and cabin are farther forward. Big point, you can see dramatic front fender. Again, kind of elongates this front area. We also have a two inch longer wheelbase on this car. Again, giving the car a very dramatic stance. The front of the car has our new face, our five point grille, and that pulls into the very slim headlights in the front that have a very strong brow over the lamp, gives the car that aggressive sporty look. We've also got the same basic feeling towards the rear of the car, very sleek rear cabin. We've taken the rear screen and laid it over. We've pulled this point back to get that very sleek kind of coupe-like feeling. And then you can see on the tail lights, very horizontal lamps, very slim this time around. We've pulled the lighting signature off of the shoulder and through the lamp, and this ring illuminates at night. And lastly, we've gone more with a smoked lens, moved away from the clear lenses like the current Mazda 3. This gives the car just more of a premium sporty feel. And we've also got a very prominent lower bumper. It's quite wide down here, and that gives the car that very tapered wide stance from the rear. So we're really proud of the exterior because it's a big step forward over the current car, and we know it's going to look really good on the road. But the interior is an uh, absolute breakthrough for us. On the interior, we've done something called the driver's oriented cockpit. And what that means is that the instrument cluster and the overall structure of the dash is completely oriented towards the driver. And that gives the driver a real focus on the road and everything's within easy reach. And the idea is to just enhance that driving experience. The second point on the interior is we've taken the navigation screen, which is typically in the dash, and we've put a thin display on top of the dash. That's allowed us to have the screen in our field of view so you can stay focused on the road and still 
look over to the navigation screen and not be distracted, but also it's allowed us to slim the dash down because the, the display is no longer in the dash, it's on top of the dash, so the whole dash is a lot slimmer. Big, big improvement for us. Lastly, the materials on this car are way above the segment, really gonna be class leading. The material finishes the, the dash, the grains on the leather, the trim elements, we have machined chrome, uh, sorry, machined aluminum, satin chrome, all at a class leading level, very important. And last neat little feature, head up display, right on the driver's binnacle, that'll display um, speed, RPM, and turn by turn navigation all of which is not available on any other car in the segment. So we're really trying to take the lead on uh, features like that. That's our 2014 new Mazda 3. Hey, Derry, thanks for the introduction to the all new third generation Mazda 3 for 2014. Anytime you have a product, you know, the guest door is always open for you here at Planet Vehicle. So there you have it right here, the 2014 Mazda 3, the third generation, all new, available in your showrooms come September. For Planet Vehicle, I'm Alvin Jones. We're driving a Bugatti and you're watching Planet Vehicle. Stay tuned. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. Tracy Morgan, and you're watching Planet Vehicle. Holla. Planet Vehicle now takes you across the pond to England. In a celebration of 60 years since Her Majesty the Queen's coronation, Jaguar Land Rover, the official motor partner of the Coronation Festival, drove a selection of its Royal Heritage vehicles along a central London route. Echoing the original procession driven by the Queen in 1953, the route passed famous landmarks such as Horse Guards Parade, Westminster Abbey, Houses of Parliament, and Marble Arch.
The Royal Heritage vehicles which took to London streets included the 1953 Land Rover Series 1 Royal Review, the first bespoke Royal Land Rover, and the 1955 Jaguar Mark 7M Saloon, once owned by the Queen Mother. driving a Bugatti and you're watching Planet Vehicles. Stay tuned. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. If you notice lately, the hot movies also have the hot cars. And one of the most anticipated films of the summer a little snail named Turbo, who's always dreamed of being fast, miraculously receives the speed he always wanted after an encounter with a Chevrolet Camaro. Turbo puts his newfound super speed to good use, pursuing his impossible dream of winning the Indy 500. We talked with Steve and James with General Motors about the Camaro's role in the movie Turbo. Well, we're very excited about this, uh, this new film, Turbo, because it, it tells a great story that's going to be inspiring to children, but because it's an animated film, it's also going to be a lot of fun to watch. And because it's about cars, guys like Steve and I are going to enjoy seeing it as well. The theory is that uh, you've got a snail who's dreaming big dreams. He actually wants to race in the Indy 500. Well, you know, his friends and family tell him, you better watch those dreams, that's not going to come true. Until he has a fateful meeting with a very specially modified Chevrolet Camaro, as we have here. And uh, that allows those dreams to, uh, well, you got to see the film to, to know how the Indy 500 is uh, introduced, but it's a lot of fun and we think it's going to be one of the big uh, exciting films for children this, this summertime. Yeah, James, one of the wonderful things about the car here is that it actually provides what we'll call the spider bite moment right. for turbo, and the car actually turboizes turbo. <laughs> and uh, as he comes out through the exhaust system, he realizes that something has changed within him. And then so there's a lot of humorous little things that happen to Turbo along the way. He ends up um, connecting with a bunch of snail uh, buddies of his that uh, also like to go fast, but they don't quite have the same power that Turbo has. And he ultimately makes his uh, journey to the Indy 500. And uh, the uh, I won't give away the end of the film, but it's, it's a lot of fun. We'll talk later about that. Yeah, okay, you bet. And I think one thing that's exciting is, uh, you know, because this is a Chevrolet promotion, we have an actual vehicle associated with this film. This is a, uh, a highly modified, obviously, Camaro ZL1, which already has 580 horsepower, so it, it would do the job. But we wanted to connect the animated car with a real life version. So we built up this uh, specially uh, modified ZL1. It's got some parts on it which are not available for uh, driving on the street, but it really gives a chance to, uh, to put on four wheels, uh, an emotional connection with the film. It makes a car that kids will look at and think that is just the coolest car I've ever seen. I want the hot wheels like that car, as well as for the dads to say, hmm, a Camaro might be a nice uh, addition to my driveway and uh, make some little changes to as well. So we think it's a, it's a great uh, vehicle, if you will, to, to help pr uh, promote Chevrolet within this new film. Yeah, and James, one of the great things right now with the car is that it's actually traveling uh, right. through the IRL racing circuit. Mm -hmm. um, it's been at uh, various auto shows. and It'll be at the premiere of the film uh, in New York in July. So uh, the car is definitely uh, making its rounds as well. And you, you were talking earlier, Steve, about the uh, promotions you're doing with this to help get families to be the first in the neighborhood to see the film. Yes, absolutely. So we're running a couple promotions, one that um, is a uh, local screening program. Uh, so it gives people a chance through um, promotions with local TV and radio stations to get a chance to be the first to see the film in their particular market. And we're also doing a really fun online social-based uh, promotion that's called Draw Your Dream, which gives children, with the permission of their parents, to participate, uh, submit their illustration of what their ultimate dream would be, and then they'll get a chance to uh, win uh, tickets to, the, uh, to see the film and also some real fun uh, turbo merchandise. Well, I talk about Chevrolet a lot in my job, but I'll tell you what, this is definitely a highlight of my career to be able to, to talk about uh, a movie that, even as an adult, I can't wait to see. So thanks for your time today, Steve. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
We're driving a Bugatti, and you're watching Planet Vehicles. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Alvin Jones for Planet Vehicle. We are in New York City, the Big Apple, and I am in the Soho District, and we're standing outside of the Open House Gallery. Now, at a gallery, you always... You always know you're going to find fine works of art. But tonight is going to be very special because we have a Bentley inside. It's a Bentley party around the New York Auto Show. But more importantly, guess what? It's a Bentley SUV. It's called the EXP9F. It's inside. We're going to take a look at a Bentley SUV right here on Planet Vehicle. So come on in. Believe it or not, there is a Bentley SUV floating around us right behind us. And if you don't believe me, ask this man. This man is a, he's from the home of the Terrapins. And then he got drafted to the NFL and played for the Super Bowl champion, New York Giants. And being from Washington, D.C., it's hard for me to say that, but I got to give people their due. Darrell Scott, how you doing, son? Good, how are you? All right, so I was telling people before I came in that there was a Bentley SUV, am I correct? Yes. I mean, I, I, I heard a little bit about it, but the scene, seeing it the face to face, is, it's, a, it's a legit car. What do you think so far? Man, this, this, the interior is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't, I'm speechless right now just, just being here. I'm standing here with Richard Charlesworth. He is the director of Royal and VIP relations for Bentley Motors. How you doing, Richard? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good, good. It seems like everybody is enjoying the party tonight. There's only one star, and that, of course, is the SUV concept, yeah. the EXP 9F. F. Yeah, that's right. No, it is. It's great everybody's come here to see this because we're really keen to get the reaction of our friends from the media and from customers and prospective customers here in New York as to the possibility of us making this motor car. Well, I tell you, when you first debuted it, I got an email from one of our viewers, yeah. and they said, check this out, a Bentley SUV. And I'm like, really? And then I looked up and I see it, but now I'm standing right behind it, and the reaction is tremendous. So I have a one-word question for you. Yeah. When? Well, if it were to happen, I mean, the decision is not made. That's why we're here, to gauge reactions. If it were to happen, it would be at least three to four years away because that's the gestation period of a car. This is, this is a model. It's a concept car. So this is, first of all, as you rightly said, to gauge reaction to, number one, the principle, should Bentley bring out an SUV in this category at that sort of price and performance level? And then if so, if the answer to that is positive, should it look like, look like this? Should it have this exterior, this interior? And that's what a concept is about. It's a gauge reaction. So let's hope it's as positive always as it has been tonight. And then in three or four years' time, we can see the real thing. Tomato, tomato, if, when. You say if, I say when. Now, I understand because you are with the company, you can't jump the gun. And, of course, being modest, he's saying if people want it. Now, I've already jumped to the conclusion, and I'm predicting people want it. So my whole question will be when, and, of course, as soon as you guys make the decision, please let us know. Of course we will. And, and, and once we do we will let everybody know because it's not a part of the market we're in at the moment. And we showed with the Continental GT that entered a part of the market that didn't have anything there. By telling everybody it was coming, what do you know? Everybody waited to buy one. And we think the same could happen with this because there is nobody we believe in that sector of the market yet, so maybe we can fill that sector. Okay. Well, to paraphrase a movie, if you build it, they'll buy. Richard Charlesworth. Thank you so very much for coming on Planet Vehicle. Just remember, if you are royalty or a VIP and you want a Bentley, this is the man to see. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you. All right. For Planet Vehicle, we're here in New York for the auto show, standing in front of the concept, which hopefully will be fruition. Let's hope. EXP 9F. I'm Alvin Jones. Join us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the web. Planet Vehicle brings you the world of automobiles. Hey, it's Alvin Jones from Planet Vehicle. Today we're going to take a look at the new 2013 Audi Q5. For 2013, the Audi Q5 
comes with a two liter turbo fuel stratified injection four cylinder engine. It puts out 211 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque, giving you 28 miles to the gallon on the highway, 20 in the city, 23 combined. And that is matched with an eight speed Triptronic transmission with a sport program mode and manual shift modes. You've got Quattro, permanent all wheel drive. That's a 4060 split front rear. It comes with uh, 18 inch tires. They are 235 by 16 all season tires. Of course, you've got your anti-lock brakes, your stability control, your electronic stability control, of course, and the suspension is a front five-link suspension. You also have your electrical, magnetical, speed sensitive power steering. Let's take a look and crunch the numbers. The manufacturer suggested retail price $35,900. The paint is the ice silver metallic, that's $475. The panorama sunroof $1,500. You also have your convenience package for $1,000. That includes your music interface with your iPod cable. Also, you get a garage door opener and Bluetooth. The lighting package comes with the Audi Xeon Plus front lighting. You also have LED daytime running lights and LED tail lights, that's for $750. In the seats, you've got heated front seats for $450. Your destination charge is $895. And that puts your total price at $40,970. So there you have it, a look at the Audi Q5. For more information, you can go to Audi's website, which is AudiUSA.com. So there you have it. Uh, oh, speaking, we can talk about websites. Don't forget ours, which is PlanetVehicle.com. We also have Twitter, which is Planet Vehicle, of course, at Twitter. Um, Facebook, Planet Vehicle. Just remember, Planet Vehicle. And for Planet Vehicle with the Audi Q5, I'm Alfred Jones. We're driving a Bugatti and you're watching Planet Vehicle. Stay tuned. And boy, you're welcome to Planet Vehicle, first of all. Well, thank you. <laughs> Last year, number two for the Sprint Cup this year, sixth generation. What do, you, what do you think about these new cars? I think they're cool. Um, you know, getting back to the identity side of this board and what it was founded on, um, you know, I think our Camrys are pretty mean looking and, and certainly have some, some good speed on the racetrack so far in the test. So I think we're all, all anxiously uh, anticipating, you know, what's, what's in store for us this season. Now with the change in the weight distribution, what have you noticed with that so far on the track? You know, the biggest thing is, is just the, the, you know, the, the, the bodies and things on them, you know, having, having more grip, being a little bit faster on the racetrack, certainly at a mile and a half track like, like Charlotte uh, last week, um, speeds were fast. They were, they were definitely, um, you know, acknowledgeable right off the bat. It was like, this thing is super fast. I'm going qualifying speeds and race trim. What's it going to be like in qualifying trim? So, you know, certainly something that we all uh, recognize right off the bat. I mean, you know, I had guys calling, you know, Casey called and, and when I was talking to him about it. He did a test, uh, you know, weeks prior and he was like, man, it's, it's way fast. You know, I don't, we, none of us know what it's going to race like, but we certainly know what it feels like, you know, by ourselves. And one last question for you. How are you feeling with the, with the new flaps? Does that make you feel more more comfortable well, I haven't seen them <laughs> luckily but uh, hopefully when I do see them they they work you know like they're supposed to but they're definitely a lot bigger okay. they should work bigger is always better right that's what they say like. yeah. join us on YouTube Twitter Facebook and the web planet vehicle brings you the world of automobiles